Hello Bournemouth fans, Cherries Red Army and welcome to this latest video. First of all, thank you for everyone who joined us on our first watch along versus Birmingham. We had an extra 40 subscribers. We're now on 599, who's going to be number 600 and we got over 100 likes. It was very interactive and we will look to do more of them throughout the season. So thank you for that. So we're going to have another match preview coming your way, another quick turnaround in the championship. But first of all, Let's get on with some transfer news. Arnie Danjuma landed in Spain then and he's likely to sign for Villarreal. They stumped up 25 million euros. That equates to about 20 million pounds. We will lose 17 goals from this team. We wish Arnie all the best, but what can we bring in to replace that? We were told earlier on in the week then that it won't be Liam Delap and it might not be Clark Harris. Morgan Rogers seems to be a player on his way to Bournemouth for about £9 million. This is a guy we probably would have paid £18 million for in the Premier League, but he's out of the Manchester City Academy. On loan last season at Lincoln City, 25 appearances, 6 goals and 2 assists. Very much looks like in the mould of Jaden Anthony, can play on the left, that's his looks like his predominant sort of side but he can play on the right and I've also seen clips of him playing down the centre in like a number 10 position. Technically very good with his feet, very balanced on both sides and he does have a turn of pace and he can score goals as well. So where will he fit into this Bournemouth team? If he signs more than likely at the start he'll probably be putting heat on David Brooks and Jaden Anthony. As the season develops though, I think it'll very much be whichever two out of the three that are in form will get the nod, with junior Stanislas also playing his part as well. Another potential incoming is Gary Cahill on a one-year deal free transfer, 35 years of age now. And you have to question what does that potentially mean for Steve Cook? Because we currently have four centre-backs and I'm not sure we need another one, unless someone exit or someone goes out on loan. Gary Cahill does have experience, but if we do keep Cookie, Ibsen Rossi for me is doing nothing wrong and will play his part this season. Mepham's definitely improved and Lloyd Kelly is showing his maturity at centre-back this season. So let me know what you think about this deal. It could be a 50-50 split between the fans, but I'd like to know what you think. Carrie Cahill, though, potentially signing on a free transfer. Let's get on with the match preview then. We're back at home at Dean Court on Saturday. AFC Bournemouth take on Blackpool. AFC Bournemouth then seven points from nine, scoring six goals. And we're very much a team in form. In our last fixture against Birmingham, it was a tough 70 minutes to watch. You may have joined us on that watch along. But as the game went on, we made changes. Scott Parker brought Junior Stanislas into the game. He flipped Jaden Anthony onto the right and Ben Pearson came in to help Kilkenny, who did have a struggling 70 minutes. But it was a long ball from Ben Pearson. Slanky showed his strength. He got the first goal and then Jaden Anthony got his first goal of the season to make it 2-0 and we kept a clean sheet, which is good news for Mark Travers. Blackpool then one point in nine. They have lost the last two games. They've only scored one goal, that late goal against Bristol City, deep into injury time, but they did get that on the road. Now, I caught up with John from the Seasiders podcast to get his thoughts on how the season started, his expectations and how he thinks this game will go. As for Blackpool's start this season, um, not been great, to be honest. 
we've 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 struggled to fill a couple of positions. Um, right back being one, so we haven't got a specialist in there. And we've got two or three player key players out injured at the moment, and it has been a bit of a, a baptism of fire for Blackpool. And I've, I've been quite surprised at the gulf between League One and the Championship because when we went up in two thousand and seven, the jump wasn't that great. But I've, I've noticed a a marked difference this time in the quality of the teams that we're playing. So we, we opened our campaign at Bristol City Ashton Gate. We were dominated for the for the first half and we were lucky not to be two or three down, to be honest, at half time. Um Critchley's made a couple of changes, bringing in our new signings, Bowler and Lavery, and they made a massive difference. Sort of halfway back end of the second half, and we came back into the game then and scraped a one one draw with the last kick of the game. So it doesn't get any better than that, does it in front of your own fans? Well, ninety third minute equalizer going in, so that was good. After that, we've played Middlesbrough in the EFL Cup, destroyed them 3-0, but you kind of can't read a great deal into that with the, the amount of changes they made, but that was good. And we followed that with um, two home defeats back-to-back, -back. firstly against Cardiff, lost 2-0, and we've just lost 1-0 at home to, to Coventry. But the, we, we did notice against Cardiff there was a massive gulf in class, which has got some Blackpool fans worried. And uh, we're very worried for this game coming up at uh, Dean Court this weekend, the Vitality Stadium, whatever it's called these days. So let's take a look at Blackpool in more detail then, John. You did get promoted through the playoffs last season and your expectations then of this season, like you said, one point out of nine at the moment in the league. You do have Jerry Yates, who scored 21 goals last season. Where's your goals coming from? And is, is it just trying to stay up and not get relegated? Is that the expectation? I'd say so, yeah. that The goal is just to not get relegated this season, consolidate and hopefully kick on from there. Um, goals this season, as you mentioned, Jerry Yates, he was our top striker last season. He did kind of tail off towards the back end of last season. And he's, he's kind of, I wouldn't say struggled, but... He, he seems to be snapping at chances on the very few chances that he's been given this season. So he perhaps needs just that one goal to set him off again. Um, our new, new signing called Shane Lavery, he's a bit of an unknown quantity, he's from Linfield. He really tore it up there last year, scoring a ridiculous amount of goals and he looks a real prospect. But he's only been playing off the bench, apart from against our last game at home to Coventry when he started. And ironically, he missed two or three chances. So he's um, he looks better, kind of better coming on. But I'm, I'm sure goals will come from him. So that there are two main goal threats. We're, we're missing uh, Gary Medine, who's out injured. He's a he's a big presence up front. He's a big bloke. I'm sure you've heard of him, um, lower league striker. But he has played mm. at Cardiff at high level. So he's always a very good option as an out ball to hold the ball up and he's very good with his feet as well for scoring goals but unfortunately he's out so yeah we're, we're missing a, a key playmaker in midfield as well called Kevin Stewart and he's uh, he keeps things ticking over in midfield and he plays the easy balls and plays people in so we're missing him so yeah uh, where goals are coming from who knows <laughs> I don't think really it's going to happen tomorrow when you mention players like that, it doesn't surprise me. You know, you've had players like Brett Ormerod and Taylor Fletcher. So when you, you mention those type of players, it, it just seems like a, a really nice fit. For From Bournemouth's point of view, then, we have scored two goals in each of our three games. Uh, we do look to try and get on the attack. We were a little bit reserved against Birmingham, but we turned on the start in the final 20 minutes. A very useful, youthful team at the moment. We've got John, Jaden Anthony, Gavin Kilkenny, David Brooks is playing himself into some form this season how do you expect the black ball team to line up in this fixture and try and keep yourself potentially in the game well neil critchley to give him his dues he well last season he he did a job he did really good jobs on the big teams like peterborough hull um all, all the all the top teams we, we beat them all but we tended to struggle against the lesser teams the last team with less abilities so whether he's going to do a, a tactical masterclass on Bournemouth, given this is probably our toughest test thus far, uh, remains to be seen. But we've been playing this strange 4-4-2 formation at the moment that's just clearly not working. So we're, we're getting overrun in midfield a lot and we're trying to pass it out from the back. And badly at the moment, we're getting closed down and we're, we're giving the ball away. So we've been 4-4-2 the first three games. So I kind of expect him to change it. We may go to a, 
um, a back three with two wing backs. But like I say, we've got this problem where we don't have a recognised right back. So I, I expect him to change it and play more defensive. Try and soak, soak up the pressure from yourselves. Try and catch you on the break, which we were very good at last last season. Um, soaking up the pressure from the better teams and just catching them on the break because we've got this players, we've got the players to do that to hurt you with pace. Um, Josh Bowler and CJ Hamilton, CJ's not been firing as well either, but that's kind of how, how I expect us to play. So don't expect us to go guns blazing to try and beat you. So I think we'll just that'll just play into your hands and we'll get hammered. So if we if we do beat you, I think that's how we're going to do it. And in the championship, anyone can beat anyone. Do you have a score prediction then, John, for this game? Are you going to the game? I'm not, though, because it's a bit too far. But one of our um, podcast crew members are Matt Smith. He's up at six in the morning, I believe, for the for the epic journey down there. We did look at the... Uh, I did actually fancy this game because I've never mm. been. It's one of the very few grounds I've never been to. Um, the cost on the trains was like 150 quid and you have to like change three times and... Uh, six and a half hours, I think it was. So I thought I'd better give it a miss. As for prediction, I'll go for three 0 to Bournemouth. I just do do not fancy us at all this weekend. And finally, do you want to tell the viewers where they can find your podcast and what potential content you've got going again over this weekend? Yeah, um, if any Bournemouth fans want to check us out, we're on ccabspodcast.co.uk, our website. We're on YouTube as well. Just just check us out on there. Uh, Twitter, use all the usual places. Just search us out and you'll, and you'll find us. Oh, one one thing I forgot to say actually. I hope someone delivers a, a very hard crunching tackle on Ben Pearson and puts him out of the uh, the game quite early on, given his connections with um, those who shall not be mentioned. That's PNE, by the way. And he did come off the bench against Birmingham, so there's a good chance he'll start. John, we hope you enjoy the game. We hope it's a good game, first of all. Uh, Good luck for the rest of the season, but really appreciate you coming on Cherries Red Army and giving us a Blackpool input. No worries, mate. Thanks a lot. Cheers. That was John from the Seasiders podcast. If you want to check their content out this weekend, the details are in the description and where you can find them. So what's my predicted 11 for this game then against Blackpool? A bit of a surprise, you might think, but I'm going to stick with Travers. He still needs to go out on loan, but that clean sheet, I would keep him in goal. Jordan Samora can keep his place at left back with an almost man of the match performance. Lloyd Kelly is showing his maturity and leadership at centre back. And I would keep Ibsen Rossi alongside him in this fixture. The big question is whether you keep Mepham at right back, but I don't think we need to be as defence-minded in this game at home. So I would look to bring in a natural fullback if fit. Jack Stacey is fit, I'd play Jack Stacey. In CDM, I would give Gavin Kilkenny a rest and I'd play Ben Pearson. Came on, changed the game and looked very much ready to take on a full 90 minutes. So I chuck Ben Pearson in. To the left, I would keep Jaden Anthony, David Brooks to come back into the team after suspension, Philip Billing and Mark Ondes to play ahead. And Mark Ondes didn't have the best of nights at Birmingham, but maybe at home he'll be more influential. And Dom Solanke scored his first goal of the season and I expect him fully to lead the line. What's your team predicted lineup? So I'm going for another Cherries win in this game, going for the famous Cherries Red Army 3-1 win. We want to know your thoughts. Let us know in the comments your predicted lineups, your score predictions and how this game might play out. We like to see what you think. Also, give this video a like, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. We will try and get a review out to you after the game and any footage that we get. And also subscribe to our channel as we look to go past 600. Thanks for joining us. Until the next video, we'll see you soon. Up the cherries.